All right, I want to welcome you, welcome you guys back to the Draken Station. We are on season two, episode three, and I'm very, very excited. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you have any comments, please hit us on the comments below and we'll answer any questions since we don't have any fans yet. Now, today is a special day. Um, it's my first podcast with my very, very good friend I know for many years, Jim and I. Jason, Kekabin, the magician, has arrived. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Drake and Station podcast. I'm so glad to finally be here. This is my first podcast. I actually wanted it to be very special, so I made sure that I brought in a very special person dear to my heart, as well as working with one of, one of my best friends and another best friend who I've known for many years. We're going on like 15 or 20 years. It's, it's uh, been an amazing journey for us all uh, with everything happening right now and with COVID-19, the way that things are moving, we are all we have as friends and you know what? We gotta enjoy what we have and let's just move forward here. I also wanna thank uh, Mr. Carl Taylor at TSN, that is Taylor Sports Nutrition. He has helped me and helped other individuals if you want to get healthier, if you want to look leaner, if you want to put on some muscle, if you just have overall health issues, you got to ask this guy. He's located in Silmar. He is fantastic. Uh, the stuff that he will put you on will blow your mind, and it does work, trust me. Um, moving right along, I would like to invite my guest, who I'm so happy that came through, and uh, dear friend and one of the sweetest guys I know in the world. This is Mr. Chauncey Leopardi. Everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you? Uh, I guess I'm, I'm better known as Squints yeah. than, than Chauncey Leopardi, just yes. for everybody out there. Yes. Um, happy to be here, and uh, you know, I'm glad that you Just so it first. doesn't get weird, I just want to say it's an honor and a pleasure to meet you, brother. Uh, thank you. I, because I feel the same. Because we're the same age. Yeah. And j who doesn't like the Sandlot, right? I know. It's, it's, uh, and you have some of the most remember memorable scenes yeah, in it, the whole thing. I got lucky for sure. You definitely did. Yeah, yeah. That, that movie is iconic in such a way. And it's funny. I feel funny talking about that film because every time you do an interview, every show you've been on, someone wants to talk about that. But that shows you the, how, how legendary, legendary this film is. Legendary. And your character alone, yeah. people have tattoos of you yeah. on their bodies. Quite a few, actually. Yeah, people have drawn yeah. murals of you. Yeah, that's true. That's huge. That's like Nipsey Hussle huge. Yeah, it is. That's like Tupac huge. I, I mean, I'm not going to... You know, claim to be Nip or, or, or Pac, but no, but I mean, but, it's, it's, but yeah, it's on that it's level. getting on a level where it's like that cult, cultural iconic thing for a different reason, obviously, but right, but it's still like I get where you can make the, the, the comparison is like when it's the t shirts and the tattoos and the thing, it's like it is definitely a cult, uh, icon. It is, type and, of thing. I mean, I almost want to do an episode where I get a tattoo of him on my butt. <laughs> Because then I could say I'm sitting on Chauncey every time. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, funny story. <laughs> so funny story. There's actually some dude with a portrait of Squints on his ass. <laughs> no, no, no. It's I thought I thought you were joking when you said no. it. So this came about in the Facebook days. It's the first time I saw this picture. I might have still had a MySpace up when somebody when somebody showed me, but somebody showed me it, and it's actually a. It's a great portrait, too. It's really well done. Um, and I was like, that's totally photoshopped, right? Right. I mean, the tattoos had been happening already, but I was like, that's got to be photoshopped. And it's a, you know, it's a large white gentleman that has just a big ass on one on his right cheek. It's just a big ass squints portrait. Wow. And I was like, dude, there's no way. Somebody sent it to me. I was like, I'm like, there's no way that's real. That's photoshopped. And he's like, no, bro, that's my buddy. That's real. And that I was is like, amazing. <laughs> Before I got into any deeper into the, like the, the how did that happen, I was just right. like, well, the, you know, at least it's a nice porch. <laughs> Dude, that's what do you that's say? So, 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 Chauncey, do you wear glasses in real life? Or? No, I don't. My eyesight's actually perfect. So, in in that in, in the film, um, yeah, that the the character had okay. glasses, and they were they wouldn't let me keep them either because they were like, at the time, it was right when they, they started knew. the anti-reflective lenses, yeah, and uh, I guess it was pretty expensive technology back then, right. The green glass with the no the no right. glare. I so. only ask because yeah. you don't look like a guy that wears glasses. No, because normally you know. Yeah, no, no, no. It, yeah, I get it. No, he's um, like Clark Kent. I mean, yeah, that's you, true too. You put it on you put and you're Superman. And, yeah, exactly. and you take it off, you're just Chauncey. Exactly. I'm the right. opposite. Yeah. No, that's great. <laughs> that's cool. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's no, that's true. an awesome. It's an awesome uh, 
like alter ego almost. Yeah. And, no, it is. But totally. it's a character that you built, and and I well, you are that character. I mean, it's, yeah. it's you brought it to life. Yeah. And I think that is fantastic. You know, very few actors in the industry get to do that. And we're all people from the industry. If if you all don't know that, uh, that is part of a background here, including my best friend Isaac over there. Uh, you'll recognize them in tons of movies. Uh, also, tons of video games. If you played Transformers, Call of Duty, that's his voice. Isaac, yell at us real quick. Welcome to the next level of excitement and entertainment. And go. that's his normal voice. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when you play these video games and you hear him, you'll yeah. know it's him. And, and sometimes I play games I don't even know how to play just to hear his voice so I can, you know, actually hear my friend. Um, <laughs> but, but... You know, going back to you, the, the reason that I brought you in is because um, with everything going on right now, my other background is the private sector. Yeah. Um, you know, I worked for you a long time ago, um, and we won't go into details, but I protected, uh, you know, you and, and a business, and, and um, made, I had to create protocol, you know, yeah. standard operating procedures. And, and basically, it's a 24-hour, 24-7 job um, because... You were protect, you know. I'm protecting a uh, an individual, but also protecting the individual and uh, employees and coworkers, and then a facility. Yeah. And we won't go into details about what it was, but let's say it was like a bank. Yeah. Because it's very much like a bank. Uh, people want to rob it. They want to break in. They want to steal from it. Um, people who know you now uh, probably know, you know, what your uh, ventures are. Yes. And can probably cool. figure that out. Yeah. Um, the the way that things are right now with COVID-19 has changed security immensely. It's changed the way that, you know, I've been fortunate enough to work for a lot of uh, celebrities and, and uh, diplomatic types, and uh, the protocol has been different with each individual. And uh, everybody's got their own um, wants and needs, their own likes. Uh, some of them, you know, like I've, I've my brother-in-law worked for uh, Ray Charles. You know, people uh, who are famous and, and are visually impaired can't tell time. So you got to be on call and ready to go because they don't know what time it is. It could be yeah. 3 in the morning. They think it's, you know, 4 in the afternoon. You don't know. Um, different security measures for everybody. Uh, we do the training here, firearms, you know, tactical defense, uh, hand on, hands-on um, combat and stuff like that. And with everything going on, I wanted to go to uh, something with you that I'm sure a lot of people are concerned about because every celebrity has an individual who might stalk them. There's stalking, but then there's, there's uh, downright creepy stalking. Yeah. You know, Madonna found people in her house. Uh, there was, you know, Lindsay Lohan. I mean, there was other people that found people in their house or just followed them or found out where they lived and just go to their house and just do weird stuff. Uh, with you, I was just wondering what was one incident where you had a stalker uh, or a threat that raised concerns for your safety? Um, well, I mean, one, one came to mind. There was a, a, a female that uh, was kind of, I guess, obsessed with, with me. And this is like in the beginning of the social media era. This is like MySpace days, kind of. And uh, she got to a point where she would, uh, she would reach out to people that I was romantically involved with and like start to like stalk them and write emails and letters and like it was pretty pretty creepy like almost like not like violent but like like witchy type stuff like mm. hexes and this and like okay you know pretty pretty creepy but but as we get into it you know that you start to think like you know you have to watch where you post yeah. where you are right um and then you have to worry about your significant others because yes. maybe she's not as a threat to me because she's in love with me, but she's a threat to somebody that I care about because obviously she's seeing them as a threat. And at some point you have to like, oh, this is a repetitive action over a long period of time. So this is like an actual thing. Like, and you don't know what somebody's capable of or their thought processes or, or what they have going on in their head. Because right. for anybody to, to search out somebody else's significant other's email address or, or social media. I mean, she made fake profiles. She sent letters. Um, Didn't she show up to uh, your place of business? She did. That's I, you I, actually. I remember that. Yes. And, um, and gave you, I think she gave. Yeah. Did she I, give, I, was I it Ricky it, or was it? 
I, I don't want to go into details yeah. too much because we, you know, we want to be careful what we say here. But there, and this was, was long after this had been like, a, I mean, this started 12 years prior to that probably. Yeah. Uh, and I remember uh, yeah. when we had all talked about it. And I think when I later. popped up on social media at a place and it was like relevant that I was in this place a good portion of the time, which right. obviously was heavily secured anyway. Right. It, but it, yes. it should have been more secured, but but she was posing as somebody and really trying to get in the facility to see you. And, and keep in mind, this individual was so nuts that uh, she was trying to go through three tiers of security, three layers of security to get to him. And keep in mind, you know, this is this is just an outsider that he doesn't know, a stranger, complete stranger that was trying to get to him. We have no clue what her intentions were. And now we're in a time and an era where people are doing crazy drugs. They're yeah. drinking crazy drinks. They have uh, what we call 5150s in this industry. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what their intention is with you. No. And this changes the whole operation of security and private sector and EP or executive protection as it is now. We have to adapt to all this new stuff. And with that threat out there, you may or may not know what this person actually looks like. No. You know, yeah. you know that it's a repeated threat and right. you know that there might even be a picture to this, this prosana, but that doesn't make that necessarily true. Right. Everybody knows the term catfish and that right. somebody can portray somebody else to enter a, a certain relationship or something else. But in this sense, that could totally be a situation where you could have somebody posing as a female that's actually a male or, yeah. or a male that's actually a female. Right. Which I've seen, happen. which makes your job. Yeah. Knowing that there's a threat, knowing that maybe there's multiple threats for somebody that this is could be a, a huge problem. That happened to an actor that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. A very famous actor uh, had those type of threats of uh, cross-dressing, wearing different outfits, wearing makeup, mm -hmm. uh, a male or a female, don't know what it was yet. Um, and that threat came... Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. We're at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that threat came very highly because there was a huge threat assessment done on that client. Yeah. And, and like I said, it was life threatening. We knew what the threat was on the individual, but we didn't know what the plan of attack was. So um, for you, I wasn't really sure what to think. So all I could do was tell uh, other individuals, um, do not let anybody in. If they're asking for Chauncey, they need to state their business, who they are, and present an ID. Yeah. Because um, once they present an ID, if it doesn't match what they look like or who they say they are, my biggest test is what's your birthday? And most people that don't have a, uh, a real ID don't know it. What's your ID number? We go through different protocols and then, then we're looking at their hands, we're looking at are they fidgeting? Are they nervous? Do they look like they belong? And what's your business with Chauncey? You know, so all those things you have to wonder about now because we're living in a world where people are going after people who they think are wealthy, or who they think have something that they can get to gain. There's collectors who want to just break in your house and steal, like Oscars, trophies, and stuff like that. Memorabilia. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. It's a you huge know how business. much memorabilia is worth right now? You know. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. I just signed 2,700 hats in the last two the, days, so and I eBay, know firsthand. People are going to go nuts because no one has money right now. Yeah. Uh, this just happened to Gabriel Iglesias. He just signed signed a whole bunch of bobbleheads. And he was so heartbroken when he found that one of the fans that got one put it on eBay. Yeah. And he literally went on Instagram and said, you know. Well, they I, go far. I mean, you'll get hit. Like, if we do a Comic-Con, me and some of the guys will come back. And they'll be at the airports waiting for us. They'll be at the airports there. A lot of times they right. hand you, they'll hand you a clear plastic card for you to sign. And that's dangerous <laughs> because you don't know what it'll end up being on. Or the fact that they could just steal your signature and replicate it and put it on right. things anyway. Yeah. Oh, so like dang. things yeah. that you don't think of wow. that are Tracing. part of this industry, but that are like, once I started to do these comic cons and get around bigger celebrities that, that were in the comic con industry and the horror industry that have these huge memorabilia followings. And you find out that like, you know, there's all types of gimmicks and all types of hustles and everybody's really trying to vie for a spot to make money off of it. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's, right. You don't understand how much of a business it is and how much it's not just a, a directly to your fan type of thing, you know? Yeah. And I often wondered too, 
like if there's this individual, how many more do you have? You know, uh, it's not like just one person is gonna gonna go crazy and, and follow you. And it, it, what happens is now that we have social media, people find out where like Paris Hilton lives. We have people. Out. People can show up. They do. They do show up. They do show up. Yeah, exactly. And and we wouldn't have a job if they didn't. No, of course. <laughs> we, but yeah, and it's know. easy to follow somebody around now because you know, I mean. Getting Tom Cruise's schedule in the early in the yep. early '80s would probably be next to impossible. Right. Or access to somewhere that he would be behind locked studio, 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 studio. Right. But now, at, like you have celebrities that are are celebrities for doing wild stunts and YouTube right. personalities and TikTokers and these people that are, you know, actually have huge followings and yeah. millions and millions of people that could have any type of threat at any time and well, I and had, their I had a client like that. Their life is publicly displayed right. on the streets because that is their that is their theater so to speak you know right and they don't think about the repercussions of doing that because they'll leave a they'll live a party lifestyle they'll have this uh twenty thousand dollar a month house that they rent yep. in the hills exactly and then they throw a party well what happens is those in this just happened yesterday as a matter of, last night as a matter of fact um but all these people come to your party, and now the word spreads. Yeah. Now everybody knows where you live. Yeah. Now everybody knows what you have inside the house. Exactly. And they might have only hired some minimal security, uh, some guys that are dressed in some funny uniforms, and uh, people don't take them seriously because they look just like mole cops. Yeah. And uh, those guys aren't going to stop and, and frisk and do all that stuff. They're, you know, most of them can't anyways. Mm -hmm. They're just there for looks. But the threat is real because, you know, let's let's use Mulholland for instance. Um, there's been more break-ins in the, ho the homes in Mulholland and, and people are not thinking about the reason why because the homeless like to live in the mountains. Yep. But when they live in the mountains, there is no more access to the stores. There's no more access to panhandling at liquor stores and gas stations because you're in the mountains. Now you got to find another way to get resources. So the individuals that live up there uh, are people we see on TV and media. Yeah. Well they're going to be become the resource and those houses get broken into and the problem with house alarms uh is yeah they let you know someone already got in but exactly. you know but they know late. they have a minute or two minutes before response shows up and then they disappear into the mountains yeah um dogs are pretty effective but depends don't get a poodle you know? yeah um but you know you talk about someone like your brother's age how easy is it to to hack someone's account nowadays i see it as the ddosing and the hacking i play games too common. Yeah, see. People, they have they, they have the unlimited power being on my oh. Come up to his mic. Yeah. I want to yeah. hear you. Uh, I play games myself, so I see it in in the gaming industry. It's people get too much power. They can DDoS and take your internet offline. They can figure out where you live and send the SWAT team to your door. And damn, this happens real real what? real time. People it's called get, swatting, right? Yeah, and yeah. people get killed by the SWAT team because the SWAT think it's a real thinks it's a real attack. And, and it's a whole ordeal after that. What? Based off someone off of some shit talking from the get go. It was just, you know what I mean? Or yeah. someone, well, some, this or that. So, something so basic. Wow. And it's, yeah, it's crazy. So. And, the, and so I was going to ask you with, with everything that happened with you, how did that change your routines? And, and how did that make you feel for your safety of your family and friends and loved ones? I mean, it makes you definitely be careful about what you're posting and when and how and and uh timelines of things you have to be wary of like you know oh checking in here or checking in there or you know regular routines yeah or like leaving you know where you were at exactly and then uh you do you know the rules of always checking your rear view yeah exactly if you're be if you think you're being followed make a right 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 yeah and if they're still behind you uh, drive to the police station yeah uh, maybe not now police stations are closed but but that was the tactic back yeah, then call and and uh let somebody know that you feel like you're being followed right um, and then, <laughs> yeah things can be dang things can be dangerous right. um and also once somebody knows that you're spend the majority of a time like a let's say a musician perhaps and somebody knows that they work out of this studio then how hard is it to you know case that studio and wait for them to be leaving or somebody else to be coming in or it's already happened it happens quite a bit i mean it, it, it's happened rest in peace pop smoke this poor right. kid got killed right. in los angeles for posting the address on his instagram account right and turns out that the case was you know, a simple him posting money on Instagram and 
and they came up into the hills and ended up, you know, murdering him right. for trying to do a robbery. And it was because of, and he posted his address accidentally on a box that came to his door. Hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, the kid was, you know, he has the number one album still now posthumously and, you know, is going to be a huge, a huge star just, just beginning, you know? Right. And something as simple as this guy making a post on his Instagram brought somebody into his element that uh, ended up taking his life. And, and uh, you got to think back. Let's think back further. Pac. Yeah. You know, he got ambushed at the studio. Yeah. Coming out of the uh, elevator. Yeah, they called him there. You know, they called him. There. That was before social media. That That's just before. because word of mouth. Word of mouth. Mouth on the street is just as big as social media. Yeah. But now you've got people using mouth on the street uh, in social media. Exactly. And, uh, and then it's more dangerous. Actively putting themselves out there in a, right. in a compromising position over and over and over again. Right. You know? And yeah. like you said, for a young kid that's got, you know, I've seen the YouTube, TikTok, like, influencer realm firsthand and that's a whole different type of new money like and it's coming in in truckloads right. of money and they have no idea like that these that one you just came from north dakota and you live in los angeles now and not everything that looks like your friend out here is your friend i mean yeah. i grew up in la and understanding that this is la gang culture and that things move a certain way and that we have certain lives and protocols and that's from growing up in LA you understand certain things and that these things exist and that you know not everything is as it seems right but a lot of these kids they come from places that they're just happy to be here bro yeah like that kid was just happy to be here coming yeah. from New York he thinks he's leaving the hood yeah, yeah. he's coming out of Brooklyn to come out here correct. into the hills to correct he made it yeah correct and made it to the lion's den to be fleeced you know what I mean basically yeah. Because of an accident that, you know, maybe shouldn't have happened. Right. I mean, obviously, if you were running security for that, for, for that young man, he wouldn't have been posting have his address down. immediately. I would have shut him down. You would have had to move. Yeah, well, I would have shut him down. Because yeah. that, I was going to go into that about another, uh, I don't know if you remember, when I was uh, working for that very, very famous female rapper uh, at the time. Um, we, were, uh, we were at one facility, and she had gotten on the phone with somebody on speakerphone and put it out there but then I heard whoever she was talking to saying oh they're they're at they're at blah 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 and right away I said sorry the uh, no, US I'm... Air Force has been active lately yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, we right away I said uh, we have to change facilities um, and or, or change the date to a different time and at first she was not complying and then my second, he said, no, we, we can't go there now because this was about to put, all, put us all in danger. Yeah. We didn't have enough people. There was only myself and my partner at the time. We were in a bulletproof Maybach, but that only goes so far yeah. uh, because you still got to exit the You got to exit the car. Right. And um, I always wear armor. My partner wasn't wearing armor that day. It was really hot. We're wearing suits. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, yeah, you know, getting back to like for you – this this changed your routines this changed uh you had to look over your shoulder you had to worry about where this person was going to show up and what this person was going to look like yeah and this is a threat that i thought had disappeared years ago too that just all of a sudden re-emerged out of nowhere because i happened to be in a place that you know that was the first time i had ever been in one place repeatedly over and over and over again for a long period of time right and then when you know obviously word on the street was is that chauncey is here six days a week probably from this time to this time turn off geolocating you know what i mean yeah and then people know you know what i mean so it's if it's is it safe to say that stalkers are a lot like ep where they're watching your routines watching what you do but they don't come right away they're just finding your rhythm and then it's, it's routine i think i think everybody's different but i mean there's always all types of different types the thing is that that when they like psychoanalyze this mindset, it's like, it can be a different type of, of thing. Cause I think they're all after something different. Some want to be yeah. friends with these people. Some people, some, some people want to be these people. Some people right. want to be with these people. Right. Some people want to hurt these people. Mm. It's a really weird, I mean, we don't, we don't understand cause it's obviously a mental disorder that they either find an attachment to this person. I mean, it could start with somebody being as nice as, 
answering a message or like, you know, somebody that talks to all of their fans and is very sweet or like overachieving with somebody and then they feel like they have a personal connection with them and next thing you know, they've developed a, a relationship by saying hi through social media or something else. Right. To you, you're just answering a fan. To them, they're, they're involved in your life somehow. And due to social media and people seeing each other's lives, like we don't have to see each other and I can feel like I'm caught up on what you're showing me in your life at least. True. Through social. True. Right. So imagine if, if somebody can feel like, well, I know this person because I watch them every day. I wake up every morning and I see what they're doing. I right. might have seen what they ate for breakfast or Correct. their kids or their life and this and that. And they're friendly to me and wave to me and, and you know, write me pleasantries back or tell me happy birthday or this and that. That's and what I social media them, did. What social me media did was got you closer to me. Exactly. Because before we would see you in tabloids, whatever, right? Yeah. Now with social media, they're just exactly what you said. What you post, I feel like, oh man, this guy likes this too. That's dope. Yeah. But I'm not crazy. But there's a but, person out there that might be. <laughs> but that's the thing. So well, the gift crazy. and the gift and the curse is that <laughs> is that we get to relate to other people's lives and right. each other and to keep up with with lost friends. But then we get to, you know, any type of mental disorder is going to be intensified through the fact that they're not sitting in a room you know, drawing these pictures like you've seen in movies the other day. Yeah. They are actually following where you are and what you're doing because you're readily posting it for them to be, you know, to be out there. Sometimes they do it on purpose as a challenge. You know, come find me. I got this and blah, blah, blah. And, and it's, you know, trying to be the alpha male, letting the ego step in and almost get you killed possibly. Yeah. You know, actually, it's funny. There's a movie. It's an old movie. I know you know it. Uh, well, because you and I always have this trivia with films mm -hmm. and stuff, but it's an old movie, and it actually touches exactly on this subject, and it's with uh, one of the greatest actors alive, Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. Can you name this movie that's about an insane fan? Or Play Misty for Me. That's... <laughs> I told you. you wait, wait, what, what movie? Play Misty for Me. No, I haven't seen that I one. I've never really? heard of it. I was thinking... Oh, you've got to see that What is that the one, one with Wesley Snipes and Robert De Niro? The fan. Oh, the fan. Right? That was yeah. a good one too. Yeah. Where Robert De Niro plays the crazed fan. Or the bodyguard. Or, or the bodyguard. Or but they a, go on and but, on. But but the the crazed fan thing has been around so long. I mean, the, the play Misty for me is is that the seventies? Got to be. So, yeah, it's like almost late sixties, early seventies. Yeah. And I saw the movie. You know, I was a young young man, and I still saw it, and it creeped me out. And it just made me think, like, wow, there's people that crazy. You know, they're gonna stab you because you're on the radio. You know, that, that lady just heard a voice and just loves your voice and wants the guy, no matter how he looks, and she's going to go stalk him. And, and again, like we were talking about, intentions. We don't know what the intention is. No. He wasn't in love with her, and she didn't like that, so she decided to, you know, try to chop him up a little bit. Uh, and we don't want stuff like that to happen, uh, you know, to our clients. And Obviously. I wouldn't <laughs> want that to happen to you. <laughs> But nowadays, it's become a different thing where they come after us first, you know, get rid of the threat and then go after the prize. Yeah. So, you know, and tell me again what you're doing, because you uh, there's an interesting story behind what she's doing. Yeah. You might this, have is my to, girl, this is my girlfriend, Jennifer Garcia. You can push the mic over a little and, bit. And uh, I'll let her. I'll let her. No, we can hear her. Introduce myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Um, I am an NFL cheerleader, and... Everything you're talking about, I can kind of like relate to in certain ways. Go team. Go team. <laughs> Rams fans, anybody? Yeah. Rams fan. Did it? You guys used to train in a, the 24-hour fitness in downtown. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you know that? Yeah, because he's a stalker. <laughs> no, he's a stalker. <laughs> Not even. How'd you know yeah, that? How's he know that? I'll tell you how I know that. 24-hour fitness. I live in downtown LA. Right. I go to 24-hour yeah. fitness every day, and the Rams are playing in SC. Yeah. And one day. There's like one day of the week that you guys come, the whole squad, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "Is that the Ram cheerleader?" And so, so I talked to the guy in front. They're like, "Yeah, the trainer." I'm like, oh, "That's crazy," but that was it. Yeah, that's awesome. So breach in security already from the guy at the desk at 24 Hour Fitness. <laughs> well, I purposely sent him out there to advance and get some intel for us. We so know how to protect you guys. I'm glad you're not our client. <laughs> that would be so much trouble. That was there. a test because if she said yes, then I know she's the truth. Because First of all, they, they, were, they did train there. Yeah. I would tell them yeah, not okay. to train down there. I'd, I'd I'd be like, go train in the desert. <laughs> train somewhere where no That's one can really find you. Idea. It Luckily, is. there's about 32 to 40 of us. So when we go to our cars and things like that, we're all in a group. But yeah, bring the mic in more because yeah. I want to hear this part. You, you have some really significant 
there's there's something special you do in order to protect each other that you were talking about earlier, and it blew my mind. So during game days when we're having like um, like photo ops and stuff like that before the game, we have a lot of um, men or women that try to touch you or grope you. So when we're when we have our hands around each other, we kind of like lift up their elbows so that they're not able to like kind of grope. So we have we have security. Have a position too that like yeah we so have a position where we're all covering each other and we have securities off to the sides but wow. sometimes the securities can't get there no you know fast enough you're especially in a on the sides yeah. I have never even knew this. You're, you're Nef- this never even fathom yeah. so I'm sure this is like an old this is an old like cheerleader protocol that yeah, they've they've like old a trick. yeah of course because I yeah. mean you know people are a little more hands off than they used to be I mean we got to think like in the 80s. You got a bunch of drunk men. No, oh, still you today. Know, I'm sure. <laughs> Why Every would that NFL change? game, it's just like they're all drinking. You all drink before the game, so they're. That's ready. the one thing that's different from if you go to USC, uh-huh. you can't drink in the, the games. It's probably a good idea. Any college, fun, no, I, I any college well, game, no, no, you can't no. drink. That's yeah. why they drink yeah. outside. Right, you cannot. Uh, we actually uh, work for a, a couple different universities, <clears throat> doing their security, and we work with their campus police, mm-hmm. and they will not allow you to drink. No. Uh, on the campus, you have to you have to show up drunk. Correct. Yeah. But NFL, <laughs> that's a lot. NFL all day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the NFL makes money off it. You yes. know, they, their their commercials are based off of it. Right. There's football players running with cans on and, their head. And only in the NFL, like people really hate each other. Like if you're going for oh, a team, it's very, because because if you go to a, a college yeah. game, we cheer, we hate, but we're not gonna hurt you. Like yeah, we're not no, gonna hurt no. UCLA. Oh, yeah. Fans, we're, we're not gonna do I'm that. I'm not even a player, and I get I get yelled at. Yeah. Ask her, <laughs> really? How, how do you feel on games playing the Raiders? <laughs> you could imagine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Raider Nation, they're out to attack us. <laughs> no, oh boy! You, but, but, but that's yeah, not my, a foul, yeah, man. My they, brother-in-law, they, they hate your guts. My brother-in-law would be upset. Yeah. But oh well, it's <laughs> you know it's each their own. Everybody's got their favorite team, their favorite actor, their favorite car. Yeah. yeah. You know, but we're not gonna, but we're not gonna go hurt them because we don't like them. Right. The, the, that that's when you find out who the fifty one fifties are. They're like you know the people that it's like religion. You know, and I don't want to talk religion. This is this is a rule that we have in EP or executive protection. We don't speak religion. We don't speak sports, and we definitely don't speak politics. Yeah. Um, but there's certain extremists that want you to believe in their beliefs, mm-hmm. and they'll take it so far that they want to hurt you, and sometimes. A celebrity or a public figure will say something online or on TV uh, about something having to do with politics or sports or whatever, and then the individual takes that to heart. Then they see him in public and they want to give him a piece of their mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's changed a lot of uh, protocol as well. You know, we, we even the FBI searches emails to see what threats are. Uh, you know, they're checking for threats against presidents and stuff like that yes. because. People have their own idea, ideals and their own beliefs, and that becomes dangerous to the individual. Yeah. Um, but for you, for you, especially, it would be really hard to protect a team. You know, it's one thing when we're one on one, or if I have uh, my partner and I protecting you, and maybe your little entourage. But when you have a team of females, it's actually smart that they have a protocol to protect themselves and protect each other. Yeah. Because it's like ants. When ants when ants get threatened or their colony, a lot of them will form a chain to protect themselves, or they mount themselves like uh, military yeah. soldiers will go out while the other ones come in, protect the babies, and so forth. There's a there's a there's an ops. There's a plan for everything, and it consistently changes as uh, times change. Right. But uh, you know, I didn't want to hold you guys up too long. I don't know how you're doing on time. Um, <laughs> we're gonna go. I, we're just gonna go eat dinner. It's my little brother's birthday, actually. Happy birthday! Oh, happy oh, birthday, happy man! Birthday. I'm glad you guys to come in and I celebrate know. your birthday here. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> he just drove from. Uh, he just drove from Laughlin out here, so I'm sure it's a nice little break from the car ride. Oh yeah, yeah nice. What's the temperature out there right now? Like 150. Right now, probably 100. Or so. oh, okay, 100 man. at night, yeah, but uh, during the day is what? 150? 120. Oh, 120. Okay, that's better. Yeah, because Afghanistan's 150. Is it? <laughs> Afghanistan is 150. It's like insane, man. I don't. It gets that hot. It's amazing that like you're you're tan in one minute. It's yeah. amazing. It's it's interesting. My when my brother did a uh, tour in Afghanistan, couple in Iraq, but but he was showing me pictures of Iraq of like sandstorms that would come in in Afghanistan as well, and just like 
they just call them blackouts. Like it would literally shut down military operations for three, right. four days at a time because you see it. And I was like, where's the sandstorm? He's like, that is the sandstorm in the picture. And it's like, it's just a wall. It looks like a big ass mountain, but that's literally like, you know, yeah, you see on like Arabian Nights or in yeah, like Aladdin yeah, right. or something that like this happened. That's a real deal. That's a real deal. Right. <laughs> this ain't just cartoons or movies. Like, right. Yeah. Sandstorms come in and it literally shuts down military operations for like three days. Yeah, it's no, like we, we just go in our tents and we just chill because nothing's going on. There's like you no moving around in that. Yeah, you we've can't got, see, we've, right? We got a bunch of military guys that work for us and, and there's stories that they come back with about those. And, and the other one is the camel spiders. Mm. You know, I love spiders. I'm cool with it. But yeah, a spider do. that's the size of a dinner plate, um, I definitely need to play with and yeah. see how that is. <laughs> but they, that's... No, they, they, they would fall. Asleep. <laughs> They'd be asleep in the desert, and these camel spiders come running around, and you know they wake They're up with huge. holes in the yeah. They wake up a hole. It's it's actually not really a spider. It's a scorpion, but still, yeah. It's just the things they have to watch out for. It's like the movie Aliens, but um, I would really like to thank you for coming today, man. It was oh, so great seeing you, and, and my pleasure. You know, this having, is actually having uh, the bro come for his birthday. That's awesome. Yeah, man. This is cool because it was the first time that I've. Uh, I have my own podcast, obviously, with the industry I'm involved in now. And I've done quite a few others that were really Sandlot based. Correct, correct. Yeah, tell us about this stuff. I, if you have time. Yeah, um, I, I want to know more about that stuff. Like, what do you have coming up? You know, what do you got, uh, uh, you got to offer? We have a, well, I have my own brand of cannabis called, uh, named after me, Squints, obviously. Nice. Like my own line of stuff. But uh, also, oh, uh, awesome. we Squints. have a company. <laughs> company called foreign genetics which is uh we've been getting a lot of press lately and we cultivate so we're actually growers um we pr produce and grow indoor cannabis and uh i obviously have a retail i have a full-on background in retail distribution and everything but uh you know i've been on the cultivation side for the last few years so nice a lot of uh lonely lonely warehouse days and nights of just me and plants but <laughs> um, yeah, look out for that. Uh, you can check us on Instagram at foreign genetics. Um, my handle is at squints. Um, and, uh, you know, we post quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of back, like background stuff that most people wouldn't see in the industry or understand about it. On my podcast, we do a lot of, uh, it's called Picture Me Rolling, like the Tupac song. That's awesome. And, yeah. uh, do, do you guys sample amazing. it on the show? Yeah, we do. Oh, dude. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't have some here. That's my intro for the show <laughs> is, is like the, the, you know, Picture Me Rolling, the beat comes on and then I just right. kind of start talking over it. But I'll have industry guests um, and not as many like, uh, I'll have a few cannabis influencers in the space, but I like to talk to like technical people. So I like to bring in like top cultivators and people that have uh you know advanced extraction knowledge and things like this and kind of focus on you know the celebrity background but also like the business itself so it's a lot of fun doing that that's awesome and i like doing it because i get to meet a lot of a lot of people that that i admire yeah from the online space right it's an interesting business because obviously it's been taboo for so long even though it, it existed and and we were all there and even through the prop 215 through the medical days it was like I mean, you, it was still taboo in a sense, so it was very yeah. hidden and very guarded and nobody really talked to each other unless they were, you know, doing business directly. And even though it was gray area state, you know, certified at that point, it was still like a, a very closed industry. And now that, you know, they've passed a state law to make it, you know, legal for, you know, adult consumption, it's becoming more of like a... a of a you know a upfront business and right. we're starting to be able to mingle between companies and the right. pioneers of this space are now we're able to see what everybody else is up to where before like you know we we knew of each other but probably didn't get to to have that kind of vocal you know rapport or to you know run ideas back and forth across each other. We kind of have a community now, which is cool to see the space kind of shaping up. You know? That's awesome. Yeah, and, and it's the same. You know. I, we did security for that industry because we they needed it 100%. you know i mean back then it was nuts everybody oh, was yeah. going after everybody well it's straight cowboy stuff it was straight it was like the the wild wild west yeah and you know was i would it, we, was it was it because it, it obviously cash only business so so, it, so 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 people were like let us bank. correct yeah it's like we're a bank. yeah but but the the main thing too is we 
we as private sector could only work for the legitimate ones. Yes. We couldn't mess around with you know, some guy that was just grabbing from Mexico and trying to bring it out here. We weren't doing cartel stuff. Yeah. We, we, we had to work for the legitimate ones because you know, we have an insurance, we're bonded, yeah. we're also armed, and uh, we're looking for the best interest of our client in, in picking up materials and picking up product and uh, having it in a place safely. And it, it was difficult. You know, they, people don't understand how dangerous that is. If, if you think that a Brinks driver or a, a driver for an armed vehicle that picks up money in a bank is dangerous, this was, this mm. was the whole, this was the flip side of that coin. I mean, the business has turned over and, and is now, you know, as, as white market as it possibly could right. be in, in a place that I never even thought it would, would be. But yeah. I mean, people in your line of work are still getting, getting held up and, 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 and killed. hurt and killed, and killed regularly right. it's in happening. that market because, you know, it's still a, it's a commodity. Right. One, the, the, the federal ruling on it at the moment, even though it's tolerated, is that it's, you know, a schedule, schedule one substance. So you can't bank. It's completely illegal. Right. So you still have now publicly held companies in a sense on on other stock exchanges that are dealing in a large sum cash business right like much larger than banks probably are even dealing with i mean these guys were paying you know seven and eight figure taxes sometimes in cash yeah no, Quarter, I, I, quarterly payments and I i'm remember. sure you've secured people to like, to, <laughs> to like take these down right. it's insane it is. It's insane to put anybody at that type of risk for what reason? It's not necessary. You know right. what I mean? But you know, all we, because we they won't let you put it in a bank. Right. Well, we can't even have payment processors or or right. accounting to be like. It took years and years and years before you could even have like credit card processing, or they yeah. would shut down bank accounts immediately because they're federally insured. And it's just a. It's not that they don't want the money. It's just a logistical loop of they bad got- decision after bad policy after bad policy to make this a really dangerous space when it doesn't need to be right and it, it was normally they dangerous. go the other way where they make policy after policy after policy to protect these institutions from being that way but because of some some you know basically politics and the logistics of how do we reprimand this you know right 80 year drug war step by step it's just been and, a nightmare for and, people and, and it's cost people their their lives and their right. their families and these people get robbed right. at home and yeah. these small business owners in a sense that are you know just a lot of them were like mom and pop stores in the early days and these people would have to take product from the place because they were getting broken into constantly mm. right well you Repet- remember what, repeatedly you remember what happened to the couple that was taken out to the desert and yeah i heard about that tied to a tree yeah and uh they were owners of a uh, a spot or in that industry, that's crazy. And and and, and the uh, kidnapper held a torch to the husband's genitals until yeah. the wife would tell him where the safe was. Yeah, they didn't have a safe. They didn't have money. They didn't have money. That's they, so the, freaking the, the, sad. The thought was that this guy was this big baller or something else, and he yeah. literally got he got disfigured. And that's right. happened actually a couple of times. There's been a right. couple of guys castrated. Yeah. Over like some some weird. Yeah. You know, it's so sad, man. Very, and very sad. That's how dangerous the industry is. And it's because of the fact that, like, you know, you're not, they aren't doing this to some banker that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars because right. obviously. Well, because all his money is digitized. Exactly. Or, well, it's protected long, by liars, layers yeah. and layers and, yeah. layers and layers of. But he's not uh, walking out of that building with like 10 G's or something. Well, not, not at that point, but yeah, it's laundered. Yeah. So it's 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 protected basically. Right. And he can feel a little bit safer at night that you know right. I'm sure he has a threat of kidnapping. I'm not gonna say that they don't have threats, but well, they do. it's not the, the active threat of oh I gotta worry about somebody shooting me behind the counter or coming through the door or I mean we've seen in that space that well obviously we had IDs and prescriptions and people right. had to be checked in, but at any time somebody can run into a, a place and cause a problem or catch somebody outside or, or vice versa. Absolutely. It was a, a very dangerous space for, for us, for you, for everybody involved, basically. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, let's hope that we all make the make it out of the, well, this number one out of the uh, out of twenty twenty. Out of twenty twenty, yeah. yeah. It's, it's I mean, make it out of that first. And it then seems we'll worry to just about, keep getting worse and worse. Yeah. I mean yeah. this just thing in Beirut. Beirut. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. These poor people. That that is a that's something you see in Hollywood. That thing was like. Yeah, yeah that like was Hollywood. a. 
Come that on was, now. In my opinion, that was a mushroom cloud. Well, the yeah. explosion, if you noticed, the explosion was so big, it cleared the clouds out of the sky. Yes. Dude. Did you see that? Yeah. It yeah. was crazy. That's 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 a huge explosion. Nah, there's got to be a missile somewhere down there because that, that, that is, that's like atom bo- atomic bomb. I mean, it's, it's you know, Lebanon's run by a terrorist organization, basically. Right. I mean, their government is de facto and who knows, like, you know. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look good. Mossad's been saying for X amount of years that they've been hiding weapons in this place, and then one day it blows up. Yeah. Yeah. They said it, it was fireworks. It blew up. Yeah. I seen, I seen, blow, I think, I seen yeah. things blown up, but that's no, that was that's next level. That was blown up. Yeah, yeah. I'm that's just praying scary. that that it wasn't like some type of failed, you know, yeah, like you know, failed extreme project that. The fallout from that will be, you know, detrimental. Or, or if not a fail, at least not a test. Y- yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm we don't know about tests. <laughs> yeah, so. it's a. Uh, I just feel bad for Lebanon. They were struggling as it is. They had a lot going on, and it's, you know, my heart yeah. breaks watching all those videos and stuff. And yeah. it's just like one thing after another this year. It's been a really rough, uh, it has really been. rough time for the world. Well, I mean, you guys, you know, I love you guys dearly. You're all my friends, and I hope you continue to make it through all this stuff. I mean. Yeah, everybody uh, so far has been healthy and good. I yeah. mean, I've had quite a few people around me that have, you know, caught the virus and recovered, right. thankfully. Nobody um, with serious health issues, um, long-lasting afterwards. Yeah. But, uh, you it's know, changing it's, just the the, industry. it's changing the industry. Changing, it's just changing life yeah. and for the world, you know, and the way we operate, the closeness that we have to each other, the, right. the you know, we have no... The, you know, distancing is, is, you know, we're communal people. We're right. social beings. Like, we like to harbor together and change ideas. And that's how the world's kind of been built. And now this is, like, a great step back in the, you know, the yeah. community sense. Because we feel, you know, if you got to worry about somebody coughing or, like, some thing that, like, things that we're not used to thinking about that is now, you know, everyday life is that, like... I feel uncomfortable, even though I know I'm healthy, sneezing in my mask because yeah. it's like a everybody thousand eyes on you at all. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like that thing. It's like everybody's the the everybody's the leper all of a sudden, hey, so to speak. Check this out. I'm Asian, so if I sneeze, it's worse. Oh yeah, no, for him. I mean, it's it, like it, they think I, I'm giving it to him. Yeah, they they they'll chase him home. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help when you have people just you know readily blasting that out on the media that it's this right. person's fault or that or that you know i just wish we just stayed everyone stay in no internet interstate crossing no traveling just stay in for three weeks it will just die yeah it only moves from people to people i mean that's what we see is that people in close proximity to yeah. each other is what's happening so well, stop rioting and stop protesting and stop looting and I just think stay I mean, you were on the front lines of that kind of so you're doing yeah. you told me you were doing work for that so you've yeah. seen firsthand that like that's probably not the best idea during this this thing. You it's know? not, and it wasn't for us either. I mean, I, I even had you don't to be want to be out there in that guys. sense, and yeah. and like yeah, I mean, you don't know though. And yeah. and then early on, now we have a little bit more of a idea of like how it is actually spreading yeah. through like actual close prolonged contact Correct. with somebody, which makes more sense. I mean, it does make a lot of sense. Right. But at first, it was like I mean, full blown panic mode. Yeah, yeah. It was like I don't we touch all, anything. We all stayed in. I stayed in. I well, was we like, all did. We if, locked if down. I make it through two weeks, I don't have it. We were ordered to. Yeah, we didn't have a choice. But still, yeah. I, I was a little concerned too. I was like, "Fuck, what if I if I make it through this two weeks, I'll be fine." And I stayed two more weeks just to make sure. Well, yeah. the thing is, I have, I have a business that's deemed essential, so yeah. I didn't stay in at all. I've been yeah. working like nothing has been. No, nothing same with has, us. You've been out right. the entire time, so yeah, you've yeah. seen firsthand the streets and the way things are yeah. and what's yeah. happening. I mean, my routine didn't change very much outside of not having any social life at all. Right. We just kind of just chilled in the house and did our thing. But I would still go to work every day and be out and see, you know. The way things were it's definitely a strange time but yeah. i'm glad that i feel like we're gonna get ahead of this thing and figure out a way and i don't know if anything will ever be the same i know uh, you know things are gonna be there's gonna be all types of mandates in place due to this thing but you know i, I i'm an optimist i hope for the best and yeah. i hope that maybe there's some silver lining that maybe earth needed a break yeah, no, I, I That's agree. That's what I feel. I think Earth needed a break. I think a scientist was like, yo, <laughs> we're about to hit that point. Yeah. We, we got to do this. And, and, and Maybe it wasn't a scientist. Maybe it was Mother Earth herself that you said, know. yo, but for, y'all, y'all need to chill out for a little while, yeah. so just go in the house. Way overpopulated. For, but for that moment, you know, like Italy, clear yeah. waters. Yeah. And to be fair. Nature. But we've seen us. what danger we, we pose to the... 100%. Yeah. Like, like how much, what, what we do every day 
was really hurting Mother Earth, right? Yeah. And then when we all really hunkered down, traffic in LA was beautiful for like three months. Yeah, that yeah. was beautiful. great. Smog went down yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah, everything's bright blue, green green pastures and, and you know. It was good, man. I, yeah. I didn't have a problem, man. So. <laughs> Well, well uh, you know, thanks for having me on. It's been yeah, a blast. Thanks for coming, uh, thanks man. Thanks for thanks for having us. It's been fun. Um, hey, you guys, uh, where are you going to dinner? Because everything's closed. You're gonna eat outside. Yeah, we're gonna eat in the parking lot. <laughs> we've been doing a lot of that lately. Yeah, nice. Uh, probably Casa Vega. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, I've we've been eating there. I love Casa Vega. Yeah, too. there's some history there. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know uh, the Moose Lodge, uh, not too far from Casa Vega. Yeah. Isaac, remember how you and I used to go to the Moose Lodge for buffet every morning or every weekend morning? What are you talking about? The buffet at, Mo at Moose Lodge? Smokehouse. No, no, no. The Moose Lodge. The um, On Coldwater. On Coldwater. The, uh, oh, Sportsman's Lodge. Sportsman's Lodge. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Sorry, the Moose Lodge. Here's a funny Flintstones. story about Sportsman's Lodge is that uh, that's where we did all the rehearsals for Sandlot, actually. Oh, really? Wh 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 where did that you film the, at, at the, the, the little neighborhood? Wh wh neighborhood? That was in Salt Lake City. So it was supposed to be the San oh. Fernando Valley, but it was the 90s and the valley was too built at that time. So they used Salt Lake City because okay. it has the surrounding mountains and right. the same I always type wondered. of houses. I was like, we could never find that spot here. And it looks kind of <laughs> like the valley would have looked in 1962. And yeah. it was easier, easier for them to dress it up like that as well. Right. Yeah, but I spent, I spent a good amount of time at Sportsman's Lodge. Yeah, that place is cool. You know what that place was originally built for in 1960? For fishing. Real, yeah, yeah, because it was like a, they had like a, a fake lake and everything. Yeah, it was huge. The yeah. people would go there and fish, and that's why it was called it's the Sportsman's, Sportsman's Lodge. Lodge. You would go yeah. there and fish and stay, and yeah, and yeah. yeah. There's some really other cool. history there we won't go into, but uh, the place is about to. Uh, they're tearing it down. They're tearing it down. No. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Well, they're building a. Uh, yeah. They were building a gym there where they were. I well, bet they're. They're gonna build something else there, but we can't go into that right now. Oh, okay. Security opsec. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for coming, you guys. Uh, no, thanks yeah, for having us. It's been a blast. Love seeing you. I appreciate you. it, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think um, uh, I'd love to have you back at some point. Yeah, definitely. talk about some other topics. Yeah. And then uh, maybe you'll still be here and come back down and give us some feedback on some of the things in Laughlin, the health yeah. security out there, you know, some stuff. we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, thanks for uh, joining us in this show. Uh, thank you, Isaac, for coming in and sitting in and listening. <laughs> put in your two cents <laughs> we're gonna we'll probably have Isaac come back on at some For point sure. and, and actually do some interviews about some of his stories because he's got some stuff that'll blow your mind as well ladies and gentlemen you guys be safe please follow protocol we're not wearing masks in here because we know we're all safe and tested and we followed uh, cleaning our washing our hands wearing masks inside and out uh, but for the interview itself it would have sound funny to sound like this so yeah, it's tough to do. A, it's, it's tough to do a podcast with a mask on. No, but we're pretty really distant. We're pretty distant. No, yeah. no, six no, we feet don't. Distance. We and don't I, kiss or hug. That's weird. And I wear my mask, so yeah, like it's it, it's a thing now. Yeah, like I don't take you know. <laughs> but again, uh, just a shout out to um, to uh, TSN for sponsoring us with all that uh, good stuff, protein powders and and health, and uh, also want to thank uh, Danny Trejo. Uh, who you know was going to come on the show? Well, he guy's busy. He just released him, uh, his movie, uh, Inmate Number One. Fantastic! If you haven't seen it yet, no, we haven't. please watch it. I'll take a look. Great at it, film. Yeah. I like another that. another Big humble fan. guy. He's he's an awesome uh, awesome guy. And uh, shout out to Chuck Zito. He he's trying to get on, but he's busy with Mike Tyson. So until uh, next time, you guys, you know, stay healthy, stay alive, and stay safe. Thank you. Great show, guys. <laughs> See you.